At the very start, we need to consider almost radically why companies feel the need to collect and store data in the first place. So, uh, Mark, why are, why are transactions involving PII not single use and immediately destroyed? I mean, you can speak to this better than me, but thinking back to the early days of the Internet, data collection was just it seemed like it was something that was done out of hand just in case we might need it later. So can you talk about how this early Wild West approach to data collection, which of course you've seen from the very beginning there, uh, has brought us to this place we're at now? It's like many things, Chris. I, th I think it, it comes on the back of a legacy problem, you know, old habits, mm -hmm. bad habits, but we didn't know there were bad habits back then. And suddenly we find ourselves in a new world where we have privacy laws coming out of every corner and we have to retrospectively try and comply with those uh, against all the bad habits that we've been doing for so long. So right. I think, you know, it goes back to attitude, which is, you know, back in the day, you would want to collect as much data of your customer as you possibly could get away with. The more mm -hmm. data you had about your customer, the yeah. more you knew about them, the more you could learn about their habits, the more you yeah. could maybe figure out how to market to them, or even just, you know, laziness perhaps. You could even just say, yeah data's cheap, data keeps getting cheaper or storage is cheap, keeps getting cheaper. Uh, if, if there's no one that's telling me that I don't need to get rid of this data, then you know, maybe I might need this data one day. So it's it's yeah, easier it, to store it. And at the beginning of, of the sort of big data boom, like I feel like there was also this sort of speculative sense of like, if we can't use the data now, there's probably going to be an application five years down the line that's going to be perfect. So we'll be glad that we kept it. Exactly. We'll probably mm -hmm. get in trouble if we delete it, and then we'll have to ask answer harder questions down the line. Why didn't yes. you keep that that data? We need to we need to use it now. Right. So we we've come from that from that background where you know the, the cost of storage just keeps going down and down. There's been no real mandate for us to do anything other than you know keep it for a rainy day, and you know worst case archive it off, but just keep it over there in, in case we need to bring it back. And unfortunately, the people that managed data all those years ago. For many companies, they're no longer with you. And so mm -hmm. there's been so many things that have been going on over time as you go through different generations of staff. And companies are not tracking what they've been doing with data. They think they know where a lot of that data is, but they don't have absolute certainty. And you know, we at Ground Labs started doing surveys over the last couple of years um, of different audiences, but mostly professionals, either in privacy and security. And we just asked them a simple question, which is, do you think your company knows where it's storing all of its personal and sensitive data? Mm. And the, the common answer is, yeah, we don't think our company knows where all of that data is. Yeah. Normally, it's about 70% of the audience go in that kind of direction. And, and even the ones who think they do know where that data is, I, I often ask the question, well, how, how have you come to that conclusion? And, and the, the normal way that most companies would do this is they'll, they'll go around and ask the business, hey, where are we storing data? What do we do with it? Mm -hmm. uh, what did, what did we collect? And what, you know, what, what's our business process that we follow with that data? And you get Lots of different answers across many different parts of the business. Unfortunately, the people that are giving you those answers, it's based on what they know to be the case right now. They weren't aware of perhaps what was going on five years ago. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, you know, even the IT security team aren't aware of every data process that's happening, or even the CISO isn't aware of every single little data process that might be happening. So you know, we talk about shadow IT and yeah. all the fun things that come from that. Well, that includes data. And so there is so much data that businesses have, organizations have and deal with and process. And some of that data is is very sensitive. And the, the mm -hmm. biggest risk that many organizations are coming to realize as we're starting to see a lot more privacy laws and data protection laws coming out is that they're sitting on massive amounts of regulated data. And unfortunately, it often takes an event like a data breach for the organization to now learn yes. what they were really storing. And we, we've worked with many organizations in that situation. And you know, we might have been talking to them in the years prior or maybe even working with them on a very lightweight basis, just helping them assess areas of the business that they did have concerns about, but ignoring the areas of the business where they believed there would be no concerns. Mm -hmm. And it's those areas where they assume that there's no concerns. There's no yep. data being stored that, that that can often be the riskiest, and so as a result, um, you know these organisations that subsequently suffer a data breach, you know, will come back through the door and say, right, 
let's get rid of all the assumptions, go back to the, the beginning and let's yep. look at every bit of data across the entire organization yep. and let's get some evidence and let's start to make some real decisions about what the risk is we have in the business. Now we can start to put the right security controls around it. So in a nutshell, Chris, that's a, that's a very basic explanation yeah. of largely why we've seen so many data breaches over the last number of years and, and continue to. I, I, I just yeah. saw very recently, as probably did you. You know, we've just seen a major ride sharing app um, yes. have an issue uh, in right. this part of the world. A very well, well known coffee brand that everyone's mm -hmm. familiar with just had an issue out here. And um, you know, in security, we we don't like to name and shame. It's it's just not cool anymore. And yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, yeah. Frankly, it's it it continues to be that question of it's it's not really a matter of if, but a matter of when, mm -hmm. and it's just about well, how do you minimize the damage that could come from an event like that? And you know, our, our the comp our old, our company's old logo used to be "Sorry Hackers." We found it first, um, mm -hmm. and we were simply saying, <laughs> look, isn't it better if um, if you're asking the question, where are we storing sensitive data? before we have a data breach rather than having to wait until a data breach happens and then then asking that question that's unfortunately the worst possible time how about some free cybersecurity training resources for you and your team just go to infosecinstitute.com/free to get ebooks training guides and more than 100 cybersecurity training courses all free for cyberwork listeners go to infosecinstitute.com/free and start learning crucial new skills today <laughs>